Hello, Kurt Hoffbeck here, field agronomist in Southeast South Dakota. Today's topic is gall midge in soybeans. With me today, we have South Dakota State University Extension Entomologist, Adam Varenhorst. Adam, what do we need to know about this new pest in soybeans? So the gall midge are one of those insects that are difficult to find unless you know what you're looking for, or if you have plants that are uh, very, have very clear symptoms. Some of the clear symptoms, as you can see here, include that the plant will actually start to wilt and die. And these are the very severe cases. In other cases, the plants might actually still look green from just the, looking at them from the road. However, upon inspecting them, you can see that there are some unusual growths down near the soil line. Those are those galls, we believe. And the other thing is, is if you go to the plant, the easiest way to identify it is to simply push. And you can hear that loud snap and obviously the plant will fall over as you're inspecting it. So those are really the ways we can quickly identify a field that's having some of those gall midge issues. The next step then is to go and actually peel back the outer layer of the stem and then once we're inside we can sometimes see those little larvae or maggots uh, that are going to be under there. However, uh, sometimes they're not there, but the plants will still have the symptoms and very clearly have been affected. Yep, so probably go in the field, you're gonna see some lightly wilted plants to maybe some already dead plants. Do the push test. If you hear the cracking and breaking, probably a good sign you might have gall midge down there. And uh, maybe let's zoom in on uh, the larvae themselves. The, the midge is uh, kind of like a mosquito type insect. Um, they lay eggs into the stem and uh, basically the larvae feed and create these galls and just kind of eat away at the stem. Uh, what else do we know about them, Adam? That's really about it. A few years ago when we were seeing these, they weren't really feeding on tissue. And so there's definitely been something that in the last four to five years that's really occurred. And also the fact that they've gone from being something that we occasionally see to now we're seeing them on large scales. Uh, there's definitely been a switch or something along those lines that's occurred with this pest to really allow them to take advantage of our soybean. Yep, so kind of breaking over the stems, maybe carry a sharp knife and just peel away at that outer cortex of that stem until you kind of find the larvae. They can be white, orange, or red. Do they kind of change color with age? We, we are pretty sure that that's something to do with their growth as the larvae. Uh, the very small ones are almost translucent. They get a little bit wider color as they grow. Eventually they'll hit a light pink. And then those really late instar are almost a dark orange, a dark red orange color. So. And we know other insects that do that as well, uh, that have those growth stages of the immatures that change colors. So that's one of the things, so far we're not sure which species is really affecting this, but we're under the impression that it's probably one gall midge uh, species, but we aren't sure what that is yet. Yep, so gall midge, you know, it's been around uh, various grasses and crops, but in particular, the last couple of years, we've seen a higher incidence of them in soybean fields, especially this year in 2018. Also seen it on a regional basis, Southwest Minnesota, Northwest Iowa, Northeast Nebraska. So it's definitely got the attention of the university uh, extension people. They're doing some research there. Uh, if growers are suspect of gall midge in their fields, is there any particular places they would expect to find them first? So this year we're really noticing them where crops are being rotated. If you have a previous soybean field that's currently uh, in corn or a different crop in the rotation, Typically the soybean that's very close to that or right adjacent to it is what you're going to see affected first. However, in some fields where we have bean on bean going on, we are seeing that we can find those spread out more. One of the things that's a little uh, harder to find though is that a lot of times with that edge effect, it's very clear the first 30, 40 feet or so are being affected. However, as you walk into that field, it's that those asymptomatic plants where we're actually still finding them being infested. So. There is a potential that as the season progresses, more of these might show up just as the plants uh, continue to mature. And the other thing that we've seen, especially today when we're looking, is that you can really tell when development stopped and the plants became stressed because the pods are really being affected, pod formation on the plants. And so there's a good chance that we're going to see some major yield impacts in these infested fields. So maybe midway up the plant or in the upper portion, you probably see some shriveled pods, maybe blanks in there that they just won't continue to develop. They're under stress uh, because basically nutrients and water flow is being affected in those gulls at the base of the stem. Probably in the first inch or so above the soil line. That's typically where we see it. And so it's a lot of times if you're just scouting through fast, it'll almost look like a twig instead of a soybean stem when you're looking at it. It's going to be brown, slightly discolored. 
Some cases of that swelling are more pronounced than others where we can actually see very clear swelling of the soybean stem there to others where there's a slight, uh, slight swelling or growth right around here. But typically there's also going to be some dark patches on the stem, almost like scarring. And those are also an indication of where you might want to look to see if you have those gall midge present. And here's another plant sample. This one is uh, particularly interesting. This, you know, from a distance could probably, you know, disguise itself as phytoth phytophthora root rot. So phytophthora root rot coming up from the soil line, kind of rotting that upper stem portion. Um, you might have both. You might have phytophthora, fusarium, rhizoctonia, also working in conjunction with the soybean uh, gall midge, both affecting the plant. So I guess it always is wise to probably do a little closer inspection, take a sharp knife, peel away at that outer cortex, and see if you can expose those uh, white, orange, or red larvae. Um, but yeah, it can kind of disguise itself a little bit uh, as rotting tissue in, in uh, poorly drained areas like root rots like Phytophthora as well. Um, Adam, are there any management options we know of so far? Right now we don't have any. We are finding this in fields that have both seed treatments as well as those that don't have seed treatments. So we aren't going to make any definitive decisions yet. However, next spring we're for sure going to be doing some trials to make sure we get out early in the season, try to catch this pest when it's actually moving into the soybean, and try to see if anything actually works. So at this point in time, our best recommendation is if you're having issues, let us know so that we can come take a look, figure out exactly the extent, and also maybe figure out exactly what pest this is. However, spraying right now isn't going to do much as far as reducing pest populations of this gall midge larva because they're underneath of the epidermis of the soybean and it's going to be very hard to get insecticides to them. And also we have a nutrient flow issue in those soybean plants. So even using a systemic insecticide probably won't do us much good because it's not going to have that complete movement in the plant. Yeah, so we have a lot to learn yet, uh, but with Adam's work and extension, uh, he's gonna put some uh, concerted effort into learning more about identifying the pest specifically and what management options you know we can incorporate or plan for in the future, whether it's uh, crop rotation, uh, seed treatments, uh, soil insecticides, full, you know, foliar insecticides. We don't know yet, but I guess that's some of the work you hope to find out. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for your time today, Adam. Appreciate it. That's all for today. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.